Hello everyone, it's Attacker Super 2 here, and for today, welcome back to another one of my review videos for, for today's topic. We are about to discuss and review, which is the latest in the Xenoblade franchise by Monolith Soft, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. It has been over three weeks since uh, since the game came out, almost an entire month has gone by, which is pretty insane. And before the, the game came out, there was a lot of very positive reviews about it. I've seen some that are kind of negative, and I've seen some that are pretty, that some say that the game is even mediocre and such but for this video i mean i'm gonna be talking about my personal thoughts and opinions about this and before i even get started with the review i do want to say that this is pretty much the last entry to the zeta bay franchise uh according to takahashi himself he did confirm that this is the very last franchise the very last installment to the class saga specifically so i mean there's still hope for zeta wave chronicles in the future and another thing is that even though it's only been three weeks since the game came out i've seen some on twitter and on YouTube already get it. Uh, they're still like on chapter four or five or just in the middle of chapter three. So I don't want any. So if you do not want any spoilers whatsoever, because I'm going to be talking about them a lot, then I highly suggest you just get out of the video as soon as possible. But if you don't care about spoilers, well, let's just get started on talking about Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Now, since Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is the very last installment to the Class Saga and the franchise itself for now, the question is, did the series end off with a great bang, or did it pretty much, you know, end it with a sad whimper? Well, I can safely say that Xenoblade Cree 3 is, the, is like the best the franchise has ever been. Like, the reputation for Xenoblade Chronicles for the past 10 years, over 10 years so, and, and so, has been kind of niche and very mixed in terms of it. Xenoblade Chronicles from the first game, even though, like, Nintendo never wanted any, you know, you know, they didn't have any faith for the original Xenoblade Chronicles for the Nintendo Wii, they managed to do that after Shulk came out for Smash Brothers and then decided to do a 3DS port on the new Nintendo 3DS, so you can say that because of Shulk's popularity and his, you know, inclusion in Smash Butters, Xenoblade Chronicles definitely, you know, had a lot more, and it was so great that they decided to make a full-on remaster or remake along with a brand new story just to make things even better, which is pretty great to hear, and I'm really glad the model gave this game another chance, because, you know, since the reputation, because there is another game that kind of ruins his reputation, in my opinion, but uh, we'll just go further on. And then in 2015, which is by far one of Nintendo's worst you know, like years yet with the Wii U installment, and especially with the few games they released, there were actually a couple good ones, such as Mario Maker, Mario Maker for the Wii U, and also Xenoblade Chronicles X. This is the game that I've seen many wanted to see a port on a Nintendo Switch, which is kind of understandable given how, you know, since this came out on the Wii U, it kind of just doesn't really, you know, it didn't really get that much attention and all. But, and not only that, the Xenoblade franchise was still growing at the time so it didn't really get that much love as it is aside from Elma being in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and that's about it so if, if Monolith Soft has the chance to either make a sequel or a remaster like they like the what like what they did with Xenoblade 1 then I can possibly see them doing that and then this is where things get a little bit niche because I know this may trigger some fans right now, but Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was pretty much the game that kind of, you know, hurt its reputation online. Not because of, you know, the story, but there's just other things, such as Rex's own voice actor, who pretty much had very bad direction. He still managed to do a great job. I'm not trying to hate on it. I'm just saying that due to poor, do Rex's poor direction in voice acting, it didn't really, he didn't really, he wasn't really the best main character. And not only that, it, many just did not the, like, the designs and all, but it was just more than that, because, you know, after this game came out, many think of this as sort of the, you know, the fan service Nintendo game and such, which, even though I never played 2, when I saw a lot of cutscenes and gameplay of it, it was just more than a game that it's just for fan service, so, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was a game that kind of just ruined, that kind of just, you know, hurts its reputation th to the fan base a lot, but, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, did, a did it actually help make it better? Oh, absolutely. The story, the world is very huge, the music is phenomenal. There's a lot I want to say about it, and really, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, like I said, is the best out of the franchise, and we have to talk about its first thing, the characters. 
Every character in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is really one of my favorite cast members in, of all time. I mean, I liked, I mean, yeah, Shulk and the others from Xenoblade 1 was great, but I felt like that their inclusion and their, you know, how do I say this, their development wasn't really great aside from a few characters like Shulk, Melia, Dunban, and Ryan and such. But in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, they, you can see how much development Rex went through, especially throughout the entirety of 2. But Xenoblade Chronicles 3, every character is enjoyable. Enjoyable. However, there are a few problems I have with some characters, such as the main villains, the console. Zed is a character that I, that is acceptable, and especially uh, D and J. However, I felt like some character, the vil some of the villains, are just there for being the sake of villains. Because I mean, um, console O and console P. Those two characters, I mean, yeah, they were just there for whatever reason. They did, yeah, they were acting evil. But come on, I kind of think we should learn. You know a bit more about these characters. I'm pretty sure they'll pretty. I'm pretty sure they would do that. In, you know, in the DLC when it comes out next year. And let's not forget the other thing about what makes this Xenoblade character so great. It's phenomenal voice acting. I know me saying that is not really a great thing because I've seen some thinking that and the voice acting seems off and all. But the thing that makes this so unique was how much energy and authentic, uh, or like how much authentic energy they gave out from their voice performances. Noah. Lons, Tyon, Senna, and Mio, every character, every of main character, every six main characters, all of them did a phenomenal job, and especially making them have a, you know, feeling, you know, it makes them feel more interesting, it makes them great, and that's what I love about the voice acting. In Xenoblade Chronicles 1, it was great, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2, despite its reputation, it also did great with his voice acting, so it's no, uh, so it's no surprise that Xenoblade 3 did their absolute best when it comes to you know the third when, when it comes to the cast members and that's really i can say about the characters and yeah i mean that's really i can i, I mean yeah what else is there to really offer us sides from the characters well let's talk about the gameplay the gameplay is pretty much a mix of Xenoblade 1 and 2. Xenoblade 1 pretty much had the different uh, mechanics with the Monado arts and, you know, the kinds of where you had to parse the D-pad in order to choose it. And Xenoblade Chronicles 2 kind of had that method where you had to press different buttons in order to attack. And its combat system in there was pretty slow. In Xenoblade Chronicles 3, however, it definitely, like I said, they both mixed these gameplay mechanics all together while also giving in a brand new mechanic with the Ouroboros, which plays a huge role in the entire story. And I really wish we could learn more about the Ouroboros in the future when they release the DLC next year. All I can say is that the gameplay is at least a little bit better than the one in two, and and definitely, you know, outcasts the Xenoblade 1 battle mechanic from that. Overall, there, that's pretty much it about the gameplay. Another thing is it's open world, Flynn. Like, it's like vast open world energy. I cannot believe like i you know i guess when i saw the visuals and you know the landscape of each world in xenoblade chronicles 3 ionios i just thought it was just going to be a simple thing like in xenoblade chronicles 1 with its small landscape and maybe with the cloud sea of all rest in xenoblade chronicles 2 with the orion beast and, and all but no uh it, xenoblade chronicles 3's world is absolutely huge i see i weren't went through every single place in that game for the past few weeks and all and i was surprised how huge this world is and especially when you get into other places like the colonies and you know the city castles even this place called the city which will play a huge role which does play a huge role if you're not far in zero by three and all but yeah it was surprisingly great it is so huge that i'm not even sure if completionists can finish it all in like a month and all it'll definitely take a while and especially with the dlc uh, you know further on with wave two maybe it's still coming out this year anyhow this like i like and like i mentioned this world i just can't believe how huge it is and another thing to mention is that i do also love its enemies there's like three different types of enemies like the number ones the um, there is a blue icon that I wasn't too sure. I think that's just kind of something else. But then there's also the super bosses and unique monsters, which are definitely hard and to defeat if you're not careful or into the strategies and all. And another thing that makes this game spicing up with the giant world itself, itself are its heroes, which is basically your seven party member. I was confused a bit with Rika and Manana, despite them, you know, being with you the entire game. But I don't mind the hero selection at all. 
as not only does it give more characters, it also gives them development each one by one. And that's what I really like about, you know, Xenoblade Chronicles' own cast members. And really, the hero selection makes it even better when you do the Ascension quests in, in a way where you can learn more about the characters, and you can pretty much love them more in a way. I already love Grey, and it doesn't really matter if we don't know much about him, even though he we did get an Ascension quest. All that matters is that, you know, I, I just like Grey, that's all. That, I, yeah, I know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, mixing in the cast and the gameplay and such, but even if so, like, the performances for every character in the vast open world, no wonder why the Xenoblade Chronicle Chronicles games are such a beautiful experience. It's. And another thing I do want to mention is its music, because wow, I love the music itself. There is a lot of things I can really say about it. A step away, you will know you will uh, know our names. I think I feel like there was another name for that. But overall, I do just love the music as well. And but the wrong problem I do have was the chain attack music, because whenever you play Xenoblade Chronicles, there's always a chain attack method. With Xenoblade Chronicles Three, even though you're playing a game that has a series moment and such and something else with the music still kicking in the chain attack attack uh, music soundtrack just comes in and sort of ruins it i've seen many wanting to just uh, wanting monolith soft to just find a way to disable the xenoblade 3 music the xenoblade 3 uh chain attack music because it uh, it kind of does ruin the moment to which i do agree there were some gameplay moments where i kind of just felt Eh, this place kind of, eh, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, this does kind of ruin the mood and such, but maybe in a future update they will, I mean, who knows whether or not they'll do it in, like, Wave 2 when it comes out. Uh, yeah, that's all I can say about the gameplay. I know we went to a whole, whole long tangent, and like I said, the music, the cast, and everything in the world is very phenomenal as well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much my review for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. This was pretty much a beautiful experience that I would never, ever, you know, see again. Like, I played games that are pretty amazing in terms of its gameplay, its story and such, like Breath of the Wild, Final Fantasy VII, Kingdom Hearts, but Xenoblade Chronicles is a series that pretty much takes it to a whole number, another level, with its voice acting, the cast, the cast and characters, its gameplay, its beautiful open world, its beautiful open world landscape of Ionios, and the story itself is one of the darkest things I've seen in Xenoblade Chronicles and yet. I mean, yeah, the first one had the war between Bionis and the Mechonis, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 pretty much had a lot of backstory when it comes to the all rest and the architect, and especially, you know, with some of the blades and such, but Xenoblade Chronicles 3 takes it to it is one of the darkest things I've seen in terms of story in terms of story in my opinion I know me saying that is not gonna you know make things make things better but really I just wondered what else is there to happen because like I said Takahashi did confirm that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was the very last franchise was the very last entry to the Klaus Saga specifically so where can we go from there aside from the DLC that will come out next year for this new with the new story all i can say is that i hope for monolith soft you know the best for the franchise in the near future and this is my review for xenoblade chronicles 3 let me know what you guys think in the comments section below uh what do you all think about this game do you think this is one of the best ever rpgs that nintendo and monolith soft has ever made or do you think this game is great and all or just think it's niche or do you just not like it and really just play it for the sake of just playing it or you know whatever you whatever your opinion is really i just want to know all your thoughts and opinions down below this game is one of the best experiences and also i cried during the ending and all yeah it yeah, I tend to get emotional when it comes to things. Xenoblade has never made me emo. There's no video game that's ever made me emotional until this one. But I want to know all your thoughts and opinions down below about this. And so with that, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell for more videos. Follow my Twitter, and I'll see you guys next time. And if you guys do not want to subscribe, then that's completely fine by me. I just want you all to enjoy the experience for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 as much as possible until the end next year. And so with that, uh, remember this. Once a legend, always a legend. Like a hell cut.